do I look so much taller than you? Because I had to lower down Because your bit. posture. Good not it? It's like... Are we good? We're good. We have to talk a little bit louder to get to that thing? Yes! Not that loud. Welcome to this video. Seriously, welcome. Today's video, what are we talking about, Matthew? Sort of everything that we purchased since we got the RV. So we won't be talking about the RV purchase itself. It's like we bought an RV, <laughs> now we have to buy now things. So, so we have realized, if you don't research this, as we did not, there are so many small things that you have to buy after you buy your RV. It's like buying a house. You, you have a lot of things that you have to keep up with, but I think I kind of, and what probably a lo lot of people expect is you buy the RV and then you're good. Like everything's included, right? Wrong. Yeah. It's like the dealer did, Wrong. they threw in a few things, and so we are like, okay, that's cool. It's okay, we got the hitches and everything, we comes with a little hose, even uh, the water and the electric. Well, we didn't know that we needed more of that stuff, along with a Upgrades. few other uh, yeah, upgraded items. So kind of what we're doing, going over today is each item yes, so uh, that we purchased, and then we'll things, kind of go from there. Yeah, things that we have found to be necessary since buying the RV. So. If you are in the process of purchasing an RV or have bought one and feel kind of overwhelmed, as we do often, <laughs> hopefully this video will help you to understand more what you need to expect after buying your RV, as well as give you some ideas on what you might need to still purchase. Yeah, and so we'll go over the item and then kind of a general price framework. Of, and I can uh, put that on the screen. You want me to get it started? Yeah. Okay, obviously, bought the RV. The place I'll start is insurance. This is going to be dependent on quite a few things, and so, I mean, it's going to be dependent on the insurance agent that you used, whether you can package the RV with your car insurance, but sometimes it's even cheaper, which in our case, uh, to not package it with the car. We can do a separate video just on yeah, insurance. Yeah, we'll do a separate video just on insurance. We are very, very fortunate because these next three items were included with our RV. They're not a lot of the time, so... It depends if you buy an actual RV with the engine, you don't have to worry about hooking it up. But if you have a travel trailer like we do, you're gonna need a receiver hitch if your truck doesn't already have one, which ours didn't. The hitch itself, weight distribution, stabilizer bars, and sway control, hmm. as well as the brake control for the trailer. So these were all things that we would have had to have purchased had they not been included, but we got a pretty good deal, I like to think, and they were included as well as the insulation. So those are things that you will have to think about if you're going to get a pull-along trailer. Yeah, those would be actually hundreds, uh, if not like right above a thousand dollars. Hundreds Just of thousands. Not hundreds of thousands. Hundreds, two thousand, two, maybe even thousands, depending on how much work you really need to get done. So we saved a lot there coming with that. Another thing that we actually got, uh, like that was thrown into the deal with us, was a generator. It's not a real high-end generator, but it will get us by in a pinch really you know and so if we really need electricity somewhere for boondocking or something like that obviously don't have solar yet something we're looking into but we're not putting on this list after that we have water type of purchases so the 90 degree hose saver this was something that we found out through youtube comments really it's actually the component the the piece that's actually on the rv itself it's a little plastic piece that kind of rotates it's just barely there that could actually wear over time and break and so the hose saver just really takes the tension of the hose uh, off and so it just kind of aims it down. Even with that, we attach that portion of it to a water regulator. Um, and so what this does is it actually saves us money in, in the long run because we're not busting hoses because different like varying pressures at different campsites and things like that. And then food grade drinking water hose or hoses. They should come with one of the food grade hoses, but just in case you don't, or if you like to have extra, which we need an, a little bit of a longer one, so we had to buy two. Right, it depended on the length away from uh, your water source, and so we had to buy 50 foot grade water grade hoses. The So the electrical hookup, what you're gonna hook your trailer or RV into at campsites, you should have one included, but again, we needed a longer one, so we had to purchase two. Two 50 foot extra ones. I that believe. was a lot. Both 30 amp for ours, we have a 30 amp uh, grid camper, so. New black water hose. So whenever you're dumping your black water, the hose that was included with our trailer, and from what I understand, any trailers or RVs come with a very, very crappy, pun intended, ah hose. <laughs> the first thing that everybody recommends is to upgrade. So we got the Dominator and it comes with the clear elbow, which is something you also want to make sure to have. Absolutely. Um, the clear hose elbow, excuse me for not being like 100% term savvy. I'll get there. So you can see the black water 
as it filters into the Instead dump of station. Trying to listen for it and just assuming that it's all yes. out. Yes. Yeah. And related to that as well, we've got our disinfectant spray and hand sanitizer and rubber gloves necessary. And you need a hose whenever you're flushing your tanks. You always want to have a separate hose. So another another hose. And this one doesn't have to be food grade. We have like six hoses. We do. Surge protector. Yeah, very important. So uh, again, you're going to different campsites. They vary on uh, wattage. So, I mean, basically we just have a surge protector. Uh, it goes on the like, the campsite um, area. So you actually plug into that. Make sure you have the, the right uh, the lights. green, the yeah. green and blue lights. Green and blue lights, and then That's you just all I know. <laughs> plug in, and you're good. And the other side of things, whenever you're parking, so we have parking blocks. The Legos. Legos the, mm -hmm. Yeah, stackable kind. Um, and so that's to help you level the RV. And so that's from side to side, really. So you run over those blocks and it kind of levels you out. And then along with that, we also have uh, wheel chocks. So we had to buy chocks to actually go behind the front wheel. We have two axles, front wheel and then the back of the back wheel to keep us from basically rolling away. Little little things like tank cleaner. They The guy at the dealership called him the stinky pill. Basically something that you put in your black water tank to help clean out the tank itself so it doesn't get too stinky. They also uh, sell those online. I've, I found one called Happy Camper. Of course, RV grade toilet paper. That's not really something that I thought about until we started looking into the RV and I realized you can't use regular toilet paper. So you have to make sure to have special toilet paper. Just something that you don't think about until you get an RV. TPMS. So basically this is for your tire pressure or helps you regulate um, all the tires on your rig. Uh, so say we have actually four axles in total because we have um, a truck and a camper. Uh, so basically you put these little uh, caps on the end of each, uh, you know, where you, your input is for your air. And then that uh, helps you read inside the dashboard of your truck. Yeah. The actual electric monitoring system is a high-end thing. A lot of people have recommended it to us, but then we also have a lot of people that tell us, you know, just make sure and check your pressure regularly. You can do it manually. Or they also have little caps that you can put on your, your valves themselves. And they change colors, right? That change colors. Yeah. So if the pressure is not good, I think it's red. We have yet to get the tire pressure monitoring system, but it's on our list. And again, something you do need to consider whenever you are traveling long term or long distances. Portable sinks. It's something that we found on almost every RV channel that we've come across. So whenever you are boondocking or if you don't want to fill up your gray water as quickly, you wash your hands over it, you wash the dishes over it, and then you just dump it outside. It's a lot less inconvenient than having to hook up and dump your gray water in the actual dumping station right. or whatever you do with your gray water. You still treat that and do everything that you need to with that too as well. The truck bed cover, that's what we're looking into actually right now. So it's on our list, but we are about to make the purchase. There's so many different types out there. I mean, you can get the camper tops You can, if you want to go that far. Uh, and it gives you a little extra room um, on the back side of your truck. But then also what we're gonna, uh, what we're looking at getting is that tri-fold. So it, goes, it still covers the top of the bed. Uh, it doesn't have to have rails in the side and it just folds right back. So it allows us to get in there easily. Uh, it looks, looks nice still and it's uh, very safe and uh, secure. And of course, if you have an actual, like a mobile home RV um, and it's not a travel trailer, it's not something that you need. But for um, people with camper trailers, I think it's very, very beneficial to have for mm -hmm. extra storage because there are so many things like our dog food, the generator, um, we're going to keep our black water hose and all of that stuff in there so it's not stinking up our trailer here. Yeah, climbing stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. The stuff that we need on the go. Yeah. Wi-Fi extender. As we did, said in another video, we work on the road. Uh, so right now we have hotspots, but what we're looking into getting, again, this is on our list to get, uh, is a Wi-Fi extender, um, and so what that will do is we can actually reach uh, Wi-Fi signals that are already there, and we can pull it from RV parks. Uh, it's been suggested by so many people. Uh, there's different things that you can get also. You can either do a dish, or you can actually do a satellite. Uh, I'm not too familiar with that because we're not going that route. It's a little more expensive. And then the last thing that we have on this list so far, which is ever-growing, are tire covers. One issue that we have found through comments and research is that a lot of the issues with the tires come from sun damage. So whenever we're sitting here, the sun faces in from the west, I don't know what direction that is, comes in the windows, that way. but it's beating down directly on our left side, driver's side tires. If we have tire covers, it's not as much of an issue because over time the sun can damage your tires. Yeah, and <laughs> TPMS, the tire covers, I mean, tires are very important. Of course, we just say grab these other things just to be safe, you know, secure with your thoughts. Yeah, especially if you are keeping the factory tires on because we can't afford to get all 
four new tires at this time. So we're going to try and extend the life of these mm. current tires as long as we can. So tire covers and a pressure monitoring system will be very beneficial. You kind of touched on a little bit of uh, tire. Uh, we are looking at possibly getting new tires, but yeah. uh, not necessarily anytime soon. These tires are still good. They're brand new. They're just not high end uh, by any means. So we will probably run on these. Again, we have two axles. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess one other thing that I wanted to do with the outside water uh, system we have, we have the regulator, the elbow. I've seen people get a outside um, filter. So that's one thing I'm looking into as well. So please let us know if that's uh, something that you do or something you suggest on that side. I would say that the last thing that you would want to get for your RV lifestyle is love. <laughs> sure, why not? Throw that in, right? No, just make sure you have fun with it. That's one thing that I've needed many reminders of. It can get stressful and overwhelming if you let it, but the reason why we move to this lifestyle is because of our love for adventure and new things and kind of going against the grain. So just make sure you have all of that in mind yeah. and just take it one step at a time, right? Yeah, and we work together really well. Small spaces don't matter to us. We like being close. Even with these two guys. I think that's going to be it for now. Of course, we'll probably do another video in the future as we get more seasoned and experienced with this lifestyle. If y'all have other items that you want to add to this list, please comment below. I'm hoping to help others that are getting into this lifestyle or that are new to this lifestyle as we are. Help them get a better understanding of what they're going to need long term. Yeah. Throw some suggestions in. Yeah, yeah. Any other recommendations, leave them in the comments below. We appreciate you guys watching this channel and subscribing. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Again, we hope you're enjoying the channel. If you have any questions for us, leave them in the comments below, and we will see you guys in the next video. Have fun out there. Bye. Is Bye. That, is that going to be our outro? Have fun out there. Bye. <laughs> I think it's cute. <laughs>